Now, from the news team that's covering the Carolinas, this is Channel 9 Eyewitness News Saturday morning. A final farewell to America's pastor. Thousands gathered for Reverend Billy Graham's last crusade. My father was not God, but he showed me what God was like. This morning, as Reverend Graham rests in peace with his wife, Ruth, we're taking you through the powerful moments from his funeral service. And taking a live look outside right now from our Charlotte cam, blue skies, no clouds out there. The time is 6.59, and it is going to be a gorgeous Saturday in the Charlotte area. Good morning, and thanks for being with us. I'm Elsa Gillis. I'm meteorologist Keith Monday, and we have a beautiful weekend. We do. Finally, we have a beautiful <laughs> weekend. We had a nice day yesterday, but yeah. it was still pretty breezy. Now, the wind this morning is still picking up for the mountains. We still have a wind advisory up there through this morning, but elsewhere, 5, 10 mile per hour winds, okay, not bad. 7 miles per hour currently in Charlotte, but it's 24 mile per hour sustained winds up at Jefferson, where it's still gusting at times close to 40 miles per hour, so still very breezy for the mountains. We have chilled down here just as the sun is coming up. We're 34 in Charlotte, same for Concord, 27 still for Lincoln and Boone. It's a cold start to this weekend. As the day goes on, we enjoy the sunshine. Yes, it'll still be breezy, just not to the extent that it was yesterday. Highs around 60 degrees, pretty close to average for this time of the year. I have a look our way through the rest of this weekend, how much longer we deal with this wind, and when our next chance of rain will actually start to roll back into the area. Elsa. We're following breaking news right now. Four people have been arrested following a shootout on UNC Charlotte's campus. According to an alert sent out by the university to students and staff, the altercation began after a hit and run at the Waffle House on North Tryon Street. The alert says the victim followed the vehicle with four people inside that left the scene to UNC Charlotte's campus. That's when shots were fired between the victim and those four people in the other vehicle. Those four people were later arrested off campus. CMPD is investigating. No one was hurt and there was no threat to the campus community. The late Reverend Billy Graham's body is resting in peace this morning in the prayer garden of the library that bears his name. Yesterday, thousands gathered in West Charlotte to honor America's pastor one last time. His children spoke of childhood memories, each one ending with a message for their father. Eyewitness News anchor Allison Lattis has more on the remarkable gathering for Reverend Billy Graham's last crusade. Until then, my heart is on a breezy, sunny Friday afternoon, Charlotte, the country, and the world said one final goodbye to Reverend Billy Graham, a humble man whose life's purpose was to preach God's message. Graham's funeral was far from sorrowful, a celebration, a crusade under a tent, reminiscent of how the Reverend began spreading the gospel. Because he family members to President Donald Trump, international dignitaries and business executives. Thousands recalled the personal ways Graham brought them to faith in Jesus Christ. He's had an awesome impact on our family, on my father, on my mother, and uh, you know, now we've led our kids to Christ. Billy Graham never abused the pulpit and never spoke down to us, he spoke with us. Carol Ann Hanks grew up knowing the Grahams. She told us Billy and Ruth treated her like family. When my dad died, they helped me go to college. They helped me get braces on my teeth. They, are, they were just everything. Billy Graham's body now rests beside his beloved Ruth at the library. But everyone who shares his Christian faith believes the Lord's good and faithful servant is now truly at home in heaven. Allison Lottis, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Dozens of dignitaries and famous faces were in attendance yesterday, from the president and vice president to Governor Roy Cooper, Senators Richard Burr and Tom Tillis also there. Cabinet Secretary Ben Carson was there, along with former Governor Pat McCrory, Rudy Giuliani and Sarah Palin. Television personality Kathy Lee Gifford was also invited, plus nationally known pastors like Joel Osteen. Billy Graham's life of integrity and faithfulness and finishing the course, um, made a great impact on me and as a young minister. Panthers owner Jerry Richardson was also there. You can see him here waiting for the crowd to clear out after the funeral. Reverend Graham preached to millions of people all around the world. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, the incredible stories people shared with Channel 9 as they remembered their lifelong pastor. 
We are following two breaking news stories this morning. Right now, CMPD is looking for this man. They say Damari Orden cut off his electronic monitoring device Wednesday. He was most recently in the East Charlotte area along Albemarle Road near Wilson Grove and Willgrove Mint Hill Road. He's wanted for possession of a firearm by a felon and damage to property. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call police. In Michigan, police arrested 19 year old James Davis Jr. after they say he shot and killed his parents on the campus of Central Michigan University. The shooting happened around 930 yesterday morning in the area of Campbell Hall on its Mount Pleasant campus. Davis was arrested shortly after midnight after an intensive day long search by police. 705 now a plan to create one of the largest healthcare systems in the country will no longer take place. Atrium Health says it won't partner with UNC Healthcare after all. The partnership would have included 50 hospitals and 90,000 employees. Atrium gave us a statement saying they were not able to reach an agreement with UNC Healthcare. They said our respect for UNC Healthcare has grown through this process and it wants to be agile enough to respond to the quickly changing dynamics of our field and attract other like minded partners. Some were concerned the merger would create less competition and higher prices. North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein was asking both companies for more information about the impact on prices, insurance and local practices. Yesterday, the state treasurer said there was a lack of transparency in the deal. This comes after a class action lawsuit was just filed against Atrium. It argues the company is so big it's using its power to charge patients more. The company has denied any wrongdoing. There's new evidence of groundwater contamination at coal ash sites across the country, including in North Carolina. Major utilities found increased levels of pollutants, including arsenic and radium. This after the EPA required plant owners to install test wells in an effort to clean up the sites. Duke Energy reported contamination at 48 ash basins and landfills. Power company executives said further studies are needed to confirm the coal ash sites are actually the source of the contamination and if there's any possible impact on drinking water. This comes more than four years after nearly 40,000 tons of coal ash spilled into the Dan River. A stormwater pipe under Duke's ash ponds at the steam station near Eden collapsed. The spill led to a push to get rid of stored coal ash across the state. A local group looking to buy the Carolina Panthers could submit its bid by the end of the month. We spoke to Charlotte businessman Felix Sabatis over the phone yesterday. He's part of one local group interested in buying the team. He told us there are still some numbers to crunch, but if it all works out, they could have their bid in by the end of March. This group is one of six potential bidders. We checked with police overnight and they say there were no major incidents connected to the CIAA parties. Meanwhile, with thousands of people packing uptown Charlotte this weekend, hotels and restaurants are hoping to cash in. Eyewitness News reporter Stephanie Tinoco breaks down just how much money this tournament is expected to pump into the city. Yeah, it is crazy. The music is loud. <laughs> and people are ready to have a good time. It's been fun, been fun. Huh? Hundreds fill the convention center for Fan Fest. Celebrating another night of the CIAA tournament. I'm really excited about Morehead Tavern because they said it's old school, girl. I'm a, look, I'm going to feel young. <laughs> Bars and restaurants in Uptown are loving it. Oh, it's been fantastic, it's been great. The CRVA says close to 80% of CIAA fans travel more than 50 miles to stay in Charlotte for at least four days. They're expecting the economic impact to exceed the $47.4 million from last year. I would definitely say quadruple sales, definitely. All hands are on deck. Some crews are working doubles to take care of traveling guests. Some bars are hosting parties throughout the day, hoping to leave with extra gains at the end of the night. We actually have parties during the day now. We have parties upstairs, we have parties downstairs. We've been able to book parties at night. Stephanie Tinoco, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Violence associated with unsanctioned events during the CIAA tournament have been a problem in the past. Last year, more than 100 shots were fired on North Caldwell Street in Uptown. Thankfully, no one was hurt. This week, Channel 9 sat down with the organization's commissioner, who says the city's contract with the CIAA runs through 2020. She told us other cities are interested in hosting in the future. 
Concord police say they'll have more officers around Concord Mills this weekend after chaos erupted last weekend. Investigators say two girls got into a fight at the food court, then someone yelled gun and people started running. Police say there was no gun and no shots were fired. Officers are still trying to figure out who caused the panic. A man killed in Union County while he was on Facebook Live will have his funeral service next week. The going home ceremony for Prentice Robinson will be Wednesday in Marshville. Police say Douglas Colson walked up and shot Robinson Monday in Wingate. They say Robinson sometimes used Facebook Live to call out drug dealers and mention Colson by name. Days after the governor of South Carolina said he wants armed police in every public school, we learned that could cost up to $60 million. The state education department told the state newspaper 607 of the state's nearly 1,200 schools currently have an officer. That means about half do not. The agency also said hiring and training an officer the first year costs about $110,000. UNC and Duke fans are focused on today's big showdown. The college game day bus has already rolled into Durham for one of the biggest rivalries in sports. Duke looking for redemption after losing the first meeting against the Tar Heels. Game day host and Duke alum Jay Williams says the feeling of playing in the game never goes away. I am 36 years old and it still follows me every time I come back into the state and I have fans that come across random parts of the country that are Carolina fans that talk trash to me. This is the eighth time college game day has come to Durham. All right, it is 7-Eleven right now. Taking a live look outside right now from our Speedway Gam. No clouds, blue skies, beautiful day ahead of us. Meteorologist Keith Monday has an update on that gorgeous forecast in Severe Weather Center 9. It's about time. we got a great weekend to enjoy, and it'll be a little less windy today. The big storm system, the nor'easter that was affecting the northeast yesterday, is actually retrograded, moving southeast. Kind of an unusual weather pattern, but it's still close enough, and there's still an area of high pressure that's just off to our northwest. And those two combining will still bring in some breezy conditions back here in the Carolinas. Won't be as maybe as bad of a wind as we dealt with yesterday, but it will still be quite breezy at times. We'll discuss those wind speeds here in the next few minutes. And when our next chance of rain will be rolling back in. Elsa. Security changes at schools as they face continuous violent threats. At 745, the three life-saving skills some CMS students are being taught in the event of an active shooter situation. A UNC Charlotte graduate targeted by two carjackers in this University City parking lot. At 7.30 the way, she says she was able to escape. An armed robbery caused two Northeast Charlotte schools to go on lockdown. Next, the person police say created all the chaos.